I'm a third generation beekeeper. It's, it's been in my blood. My grandfather is a beekeeper and my, uh, my uncle is a beekeeper and so is my cousin. Uh, it's a family affair. I grew up in Raleigh, but my family had a farm, still does have a farm in Eastern North Carolina. So I was around agriculture a lot. Growing up around bees was just so much fun. Um, you're learning all the time. I just graduated from NC State and I started a company called Bee Downtown when I was a junior. I'm passionate about beekeeping, but never in my wildest dream would I have thought that I would have started a company based on honeybees. I was working at the American Tobacco Campus. I used to be the producer of the Lucky Strike cigarette. I had been interning for the owner and I asked him if I could put one hive on his roof. All I wanted was one hive and he said sure. And Burt's Bees World Headquarters is actually there too, and he said, let's talk to them. And so I talked to them and we added beehives up to the rooftops at American Tobacco, and then we have North Carolina's largest clear observatory hive at Burt's Bees World Headquarters at their front door. There's a long tube that comes out over head height so that it's safe for people as they walk up to the beehive. We've added over 180,000 honeybees to the American Tobacco Campus. So all of our rooftop hives are custom painted by a, a local artist, and they're beautiful. Bees are healthier in urban areas because they're in stable environments. They've got more forage throughout the year. People like to have colorful gardens, so there's food year round. 80% of the food we eat is from a pollinator. Every one third bite of food you eat is thanks to a honeybee. $153 billion is what honeybees contribute annually to the world's economy. We just, we need bees and they're dying at an alarming rate. In 2012, US beekeepers lost 50% of their honeybee populations. It hurts to see that happen because you're attached to them and you want them to do well. It breaks my heart. Our world is changing and it's our responsibility to protect it. And, and we're not doing a very good job of that. The last couple years in North Carolina, we've had very long winters, a really short spring, and then it's a hot summer. We'll have 80 degrees one day, and then we'll have 30 degrees the next. The bees aren't getting as much nectar throughout these shortened springs. You know, flowers aren't blooming when it's 110 degrees outside. They're just, you know, there's no nectar, there's no food for the bees. The change in climates and the shortened seasons, it's, it throws honeybees off, and a lot of that is due to climate change. We're just destroying our environment, and the bees can't adapt as quickly as we're we're destroying it. You ask a beekeeper enough questions and they'll eventually get to the point where they're saying, well, you know, this year was a bad spring and, you know, we've had that five years in a row. And you're like, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's climate change. You know, it's, it's, it's changing. Younger beekeepers are, are much more vocal about climate change. Millennials want to make a change. They're very aware of what's going on um, and they, they want to voice their opinions. Our goal is to make a change in the world. So many millennials, they're taking the jobs that they feel like they'll actually make a change and their voice will be heard. Younger beekeepers are much quicker to say this is, this is partially because of climate change and, and we need to do something about that.